What's up and welcome to the first episode of the Saved by the Books podcast. We are super excited to yes, actually get this recorded and up because we've been working on this for a while. And we've talked about it for the, at least, I don't know, it's been a, a long time. A couple of months at yeah. least, yeah. Um, yeah, so if you don't know us, hi, I'm Paige. I'm Becky. And we are two women who live in Memphis, Tennessee, who read a lot of books. And we decided to start a podcast because that's what you do. Right, why not? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm trying to think of, like, what else we should tell them about us, because I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm a teacher, I guess. Yeah. So, I teach English um, and special ed. So, I'm Paige. I run a planner sticker <laughs> shop. I'm a former nurse, and, yeah, my planner sticker shop focuses on bookish stuff. Um, I have a YouTube channel mm -hmm. called, oh, well, I think it's just at Paige Nicole now, but I also have a bookstagram mm -hmm. and it's between these pages with a period in between each word. Um, and this Queen little guy Excel. that's on my lap is Exo, <laughs> and he'll probably be here for every episode. So, yeah. Anyway. I guess today we decided to just, for our introduction, to start off with an old book tag, but a good one. It's the ultimate book tag by, um, it was created by Megan on Goodreads. Cool. So, you ready? I am. I, I wouldn't let her ask me, like, any of these no. questions because I wanted to, like, think on my feet. So, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think really too much about them, so I'm kind <laughs> okay, of nervous. Good. Okay, so number one, do you get sick while reading in the car? Yes. Mine's used to be no, and now it's yes, unless it's on my phone. No, I can't. I can't look at my phone. In the, I can kind of look at my phone in the car a little bit. Like, I can scroll Facebook or Instagram, but I can't read in the car at all. Sometimes I can't read on a plane. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I. That's all I do on a plane <laughs> is read. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, number two, which author's writing style is completely unique to you and why? Um, I know, it's hard. I was thinking, I really like actually Ernest Hemingway and The Old Man in the Sea. And that was something, I just think he's a great writer. But also recently... I was thinking towards this one, um, the books that made me like really get captured into them and like immersed in the world, it's the Philippa Gregory's. Yeah, I guess that's true. I really like how she like incorporates like possibly like theories that are mm -hmm. that happened and like also like sticks to some historical fact and mixes it all together. I was thinking um, just because it was the first book I've ever experienced in this style, Ellen Hopkins. Have you ever read no, it? No, They're completely written in verse. Oh, okay. And they're, all the ones I've read are about some drug. <laughs> like, okay. some characters on some <laughs> drug. Um, and, yeah, like, they were the first books I've ever seen that was, like, written in, like, a poetic mm. style. So. I guess they came that I really, like, it's not a book, but it's The Highway Man by Alfred Noyes. Because I teach it, and it's one of my all-time favorite. It's a narrative poem. And it's just so beautifully written. It takes, it deals with the highway man and his love and Oh, I was, thinking, I was wondering if it dealt with, like, the people who finally got Bonnie and Clyde. Because that's, no. that's a Netflix movie right now. Okay, no. And it's, it's real. it's pretty good. So I guess on my to-do list, I need to add that one. But no, I really they, like, yeah, that style. And they got, like, a pretty good cast. Like, Kathy Bates and Woody Harrelson nice. and, like, um, I think it was Kevin Costner. Like, it was all these people. I was like, dang, okay, yeah. Netflix. I was going to say, Netflix is doing some really awesome <laughs> yeah. things. Okay, we had to take a break because I had to close my door because <laughs> our vacuum started. And then Exo thought Becky was leaving. Yeah, he's not happy whenever I leave. Yeah, it's, um situation every time <laughs> so yeah next question okay 
Well, maybe this is why. Okay, Harry Potter series or the Twilight Saga? Give three points to defend answer. I think, no, without a doubt. I think it's, both of us will say Harry Potter, yes. but I'm going to be devil's advocate and go for Twilight. No. No, like fully my real answer is Harry Potter. Um, because the world is more concrete, for yes. one. The world building in Harry Potter is way better than Twilight. Mm -hmm. Um, what's another one? Because there's Renesmee in Twilight. <laughs> like, <laughs> that just ruined everything. Okay, but I'm trying to, like, come up with, like, actual concrete reasons. Um, I just think she created a more, yeah, it's the plot and stuff. I know there's plot holes, but... It's nothing like compared to Twilight. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to reread Harry Potter and like I've introduced it to my nephews and I push that where Twilight I would never. You do. wouldn't tell your girl students to try Twilight? No. Even to get them into reading, even if they hated reading. I have. <laughs> but I usually do disclaimers beforehand. Okay. Okay, um there's no the star couples in Twi in Harry Potter, of which there's really not many, no. because I don't consider any of I don't consider any Harry Potter book to have romance really. Um, there's only like what in the actual series a few instances a of like kind of like cutesy little teenage love. Yeah. Um, but they're not abusive. <laughs> exactly. It can't, can't be argued that they're abusive. And that's I think my biggest hangout with Twilight is the stalkerish type of situation. It's not a healthy relationship to have. Okay, so I actually just reread Twilight in I January. I couldn't do it. <laughs> um, and, uh, okay, just from Bella's perspective, I can remember being that crazy yeah. about a boy when I was 17. So, like, I'll, I'll, Bella's response mm. is realistic. Edward, not so much, considering he's 100 years old, but, you know... <laughs> Whatever. Um, also, like, I feel like we were really hard on Stephanie Meyer, but I feel like now that I'm an adult, like, I kind of respect her for just, like, going for it and, like, okay. actually, like, putting this thing out there. And even, she's mm -hmm. gone on, I've seen, like, different interviews and stuff, like, way back when the Twilight craze was going on. Like, she wasn't familiar with vampires in any way. And so, people, like, mock her for making them, like, sparkle in the sun mm -hmm. and stuff. And, like, I think... Like, she never really, like, was into, into anything that was vampire. Like, she just kind of knew what a general human would yeah. know. And so, if she maybe researched yeah. it more, it would have been... But, like, I can respect her for, like, putting her own oh, spin yeah. on it. So, I mean, because she did, and then she... I mean, there is a huge fan base. Yeah, I mean, and... It's a, it's a franchise, and oh, so... Oh, totally. I mean, and... Like I was kind of alluding to, like if they get somebody into reading, yes. then like, I mean, you know, whatever. Why not? It's I have my guilty pleasure romance reads too. Yeah. So. Another thing I saw, um, it was just kind of an, a video talking about Twilight and it was like, his, like a lot of things that women or especially like female teenagers, they love, it gets mocked. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I can, I can see that. Like, even, like, romance, like, yeah, it like does. our, like, yeah. as an a, adult woman, like, I don't want to walk around with a right, you get on my cover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's more of an embarrassment to walk down, I yeah. feel like, a romance aisle or read a book out in public. Like, that's when most people, like, I know we do, we get it on our Kindles or mm -hmm. it's one of those types of things. And maybe that goes back to the whole, it's been such a male-dominated society yeah. and targeted towards that, just yeah our culture and even like especially as somebody like i was in high school when twilight came out and okay so i read twilight because i was into vampires like becky knows i was like fully <laughs> into like buffy the vampire yes. slayer like blade i'm trying to think of some <laughs> other good ones oh, whatever anyway i was into all that um and so i remember i read twilight and people mocked me for it yeah. And then a year later, like, when New Moon was coming out, people, like, that was, like, right when the craze hit. So everybody mm -hmm. was suddenly into it. And I was like, a year ago, you people were bullying me for no. this. And see, I didn't read it until after college. Yeah. Because it's just our age difference. And it was when the first movie was coming out. And I've always been a big believer of you read the book before 
you go see the movie just because of all the differences and stuff. <laughs> Good choice and, with that too. Yeah, and I preach that nonstop. But I know there's a lot of people at that time that didn't read it because they're like, oh, it's this yeah. you know, vampire book and the vampire sparkle and yeah. all of that. Totally. So yeah, like I would say like before January, I would have like not like I would have written off everything, but like mm -hmm. rereading it with the lens of like an adult and like trying to approach it as like I can see why 17, 16 year olds, like I can see mm -hmm. why they are really into it. And I feel yes. like it has I still feel like it has a valid place. Yeah. But is it the same level of Harry Potter? No. Probably not. But we could also go on a rant about <laughs> Harry Potter. Yes. Too. So Maybe we'll, that'll be another. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about Harry Potter later. I'm sure, in a whole episode. Okay, so let's move on to four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you carry a book bag? If so, what is in it besides books? Now, I don't carry a book bag. I do have my teacher bag or I have a purse and I always will have a book. I mean, last night we were working on stuff and I was like, yeah, I brought my book with me and they're like, why? But no, it was, it was <laughs> really Cody, like he brought her husband. No, it was like, hilarious <laughs> because, um, we went to Barnes and Noble. Oh, we did that too. <laughs> so, yes. I was like, so she was like, we get home from Barnes and Noble and she's like, let's, let's go to the car and I'm going to get my book. And I was like, but you just bought two books. <laughs> So yes. there was that. I mean, so I always, <laughs> and I think it's easier now because then I only take my Kindle usually when I travel. Um, so I'll carry that, but my phone, I mean, I always will have a book, whether it's on my Kindle through that or on Audible. Yeah. So. I usually have my Kindle. I've also been known to take my Kindle with me to dinner mm -hmm. and it's, so funny because my husband and I like we're not big sticklers usually about like be off your phone during dinner or whatever um like usually we have like a time of the night where like we're talking or like we're mm -hmm. actively watching something so like we're not a big stickler about it or whatever so there's been times I've brought my kindle instead of like having my phone out and I get so many stares at the restaurant like Cody's on his phone and then they're staring at me because I either have my book or yeah. my Kindle. And I'm like... But I always go anywhere with a book and I'll read yeah, anywhere. And but so, I don't carry a specific book right. bag. And so, but what's in it besides books? I know I keep... Well, it depends. Planners. Are we going to Starbucks or are we going to Target? True. Because if we're going to Starbucks, we have There's my tablet, my yeah. planner, my stickers, my pens, my highlighters, my book. Yeah. And then I usually work stuff on me at some point. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. So if I'm going to Target, usually it's a book and depending on my purse or bag I have, it's my planner. Yeah. If I'm going to like Target, I carry as little as possible. Yeah. There's my wallet, my Kindle, yeah. and my phone. And sunglasses. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> so, yes, but no matter what, yeah, we always have a book on us in yeah. some form. And I usually have more than one. And I know. I just you, have my Kindle usually. Right. Okay, so number five, do you smell your books? I have been known to sniff a few books. Well, what's funny is last night Paige got a book. Um, and when we got back to her house, I was like flipping the book. And because I like the weight of it and I just smelled it. Like I will always <laughs> smell new books. Um, I'm more likely it's, to, if it's like an old book and like I catch like a whiff, I'm like, wait, what's that? And yeah. I go try to identify it. But like, I don't like go to my like library room in the house and sniff books on, in my spare time. I don't do that. But I do with like <laughs> new books. So like if I get home and do that. Okay. So six books with or without illustrations. I'm okay with the little ones that may start a chapter. But most of the books I read won't have illustrations in it. I don't really care either way. But if it has illustrations, I'm going to buy the hardback versus mm -hmm. a Kindle. Um, and I'm not a huge graphic novel person at all. See, I haven't gotten into those yet. That, that's why. That's every things, everything, yeah. every graphic novel I've read, like I'm just like, mm -hmm. it's okay. Yeah. And like even... I had a boyfriend way back in the day and he was like really into graphic novels and comics and stuff and so I would like try to like read the ones he was mm -hmm. reading or whatever and he'd be like you are reading that way too fast you need to like slow down and look at the pictures and I'm like 
I ain't got yeah. time for that right now. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I would want to finish it. Yeah. So, so, I mean, the only books I would actually, and that I have bought purposely with the illustrations are just the Harry Potter. I mean, obviously. Because it's Harry Potter, and that goes back to that other question. <laughs> Which reminds me, I need to pre order the fourth one. Have you pre ordered it? No, yet? I haven't. They released the cover. I saw the cover. Okay. Yeah. And I also get them for my nephew, so because you gotta, I mean, like I said before, Harry Potter will yeah. go to others, not Definitely. Twilight. <laughs> um, <laughs> number seven, what books did you love while reading, but discovered later it wasn't quality writing? Twilight. Right? Twilight. <laughs> um, I think like the selection series. You know which one, and it's kind of sad? Sweet Valley High. Yeah. Like, I, but, I, I okay, so last year, we went thrift yeah. shopping, and I got the first four Sweet Valley High, and I hadn't read them since I was maybe like 14. Mm -hmm. And I read the first one, and I was like, dang, this is not good plot building, and the, there are some really problematic things. Which, I mean, it it's just, okay. yeah. yeah, it comes down to the fact that those were written in the 80s, mm -hmm. and <laughs> things that were okay in the 80s yeah. aren't okay now. Right. But still, Sweet Valley High. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Twilight, I think the selection series. And I think some of those Kindle romance, I'm like, hey, I'm totally good with the plot or but that's lack one of plot. Of the, but one, uh, in a YouTube video I, was, I made recently, I was talking about how I don't really have a star rating for books because mm -hmm. can I logically say like this romance that's just tropey goodness and yes, mm -hmm. it was like great at the time, is that on the same level of like, I don't know. The Great Gatsby, or like something right. that's like a great work, you right. know? Yeah, because I'll like a book more than, and I don't even know if I would consider Great Gatsby. I don't know why that came to mind first. Okay, is a trophy romance on the same level of like Brandon Sanderson? And it's like no, but at the time, like I, yeah, that's what I it. wanted to yeah. read. Right. So I don't that know. Sense. That's a hard question. Okay. <laughs> hey, do you have any funny stories involving books from your childhood? See, I don't think I have any funny stories. No. I have stories. Not anything exciting. Um, every year, I would go visit my grandparents in Cleveland because that's where my whole family's from. Um, and they had a half-price bookstore. And this is where I think my book problem really started. <laughs> Not that I have a book problem because, you know, what's so many bo too many books. But... I would be allowed to go and buy like as many books as I wanted and ship them home. And I would usually have one or two boxes of books to ship home, which I still have to, most of Valid. them to this day. Valid. Or making my dad, like we were on a, a mission trip, or it was a mission trip, it was a church trip, and I was a leader to go backpacking in Colorado. And he had to fly out to meet us. And it was the, when the last, no, maybe the fifth Harry Potter came out. And of course I wasn't gonna miss getting that book and be a week behind everyone. So I made him go to Walmart at midnight to pick up the book and then bring it to me. Cause you know, that's what you do. So um, in fifth grade, oh Lord, <laughs> I decided one day I was gonna read and take as many AR tests as I possibly could. Oh, good old AR test. Yeah, so Accelerated Reader is basically, <laughs> if you didn't have it, it was where you could read a book and then you took like a 10 question test um, and you would gain like AR points. Yep. And you could use those points to like buy stuff in the AR store. I had just like, so at our school library, we could check, we could take two books out at a time. And so I went once. And like in the morning and went and got two AR books and then I finished both of those took the test and then I was like can I go back to the library and she's like you really took two tests I was like yeah and so I did this four times oh throughout the day <laughs> I read like I don't even know I was reading Goosebumps, Lois Duncan and um, somebody who wrote historical fiction I don't know if it was Laurie Hall Anderson. I don't know who it was but it was somebody yeah. like, like it might have even been the American Girl books I don't remember I forgot about um, those but yeah, and so <laughs> I did that. Um, another one, so the seventh Harry Potter book was coming out and my curfew was midnight. <laughs> and so <laughs> they, my grandparents were not going to budge on my curfew. I lived with my grandparents during high school. Um, and so I was like, okay. And so I like waited a few days and then I was like, so can I spend the night at Jessica's house? And they were like, okay, yeah, 
yeah, sure. And so her parents would let us miss mm -hmm. curfew. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was how I got to go to the last Harry Potter release party. Nice. Totally 100% worth it. Great night. Um, we got dark marks drawn on our arms because obviously... I mean, it was great. We had to. It was great. Slytherin. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Slytherin. <laughs> okay, question nine. What is the thinnest book on your shelf? The House at the Bottom of the Lake by Josh Mallerman. Mine's The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. So, I'm trying to think if there's anything thinner. I don't think so. I don't know. Um, so then, ten, what is the thickest book on your shelf? Dragonfly and Amber by Diana Gabaldon. <laughs> Mine is either Anna Karenina or a Gone with the Wind edition that I have. I would probably recommend those over Dragonfly and Amber. <laughs> yeah, I gave up on those. Okay, um, number 11. Do you write as well as read? And do you see yourself in the future as being an author? Yes. Both of us is a yes. <laughs> and it's just... She started before me, but we both started writing our, you know, what we hopefully will self-publish one day. Yeah, I have been writing since I could write, literally. I remember, I think I said this in my vlog um, from Nano, like Camp NaNoWriMo. Mm -hmm. um, I remember my very first like actual story and I read it to the class. And it was front and page, like front and back, yeah. two pages like of like lined paper. And I remember thinking it was so long. Yeah, now now that's not long. No, but yeah, I, I enjoyed creative writing when, in elementary school and middle school, and then it, you know, when high school, college, life happened, I despised it. Even though now I teach it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. See, okay, so I think that I grew up, like, when YA was a thing. Yeah. Like, it was a section yes. in the bookstore, but it was all, like, very cutesy contemporary. Mm -hmm. And we've already talked about how I love vampires. Yeah. So, like, the things I wanted to read didn't exist. And so I, I was, like, writing it. And I think that that's really, I think now, like, we have so much of, like, fantasy and just all these mm -hmm. different things in YA. And I feel like I have, like, a whole generation of authors grew up around the same time I did. Right. And probably and so, did the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Um, oh, 12. When did you get into reading? And I know we've kind of talked about this briefly. I know I always, my parents really pushed reading and allowed me to buy anything book wise maybe but, when you know the um, i can read books right were, were around i know like <laughs> i don't know i mean it was one of those things and i know i've gone through reading phases since then but yeah i've always yeah read i've always since had books. i could sound out words, words. yeah <laughs> okay at 13 what is your favorite classic book peter pan See, that's a good one. That's a, I finally read that a few years ago. Um, mine's Pride and Prejudice, which is not a big shock for people that know me. Um, 14, in school, was your best subject language arts, or was it something else? Mom. Yeah, I, was, I hated science and math so much. And in fact, I transferred schools in 10th grade. And they were like, so technically your algebra doesn't really transfer as algebra for this school. So you're probably going to have to take it over. And I was like, yes, please let me do that. <laughs> <laughs> Mine definitely wasn't language arts. I really did not like language arts at all, which is pretty. That's hilarious. I know. No, I had an Eng I had an English teacher in twelfth grade, and she knew I, I went. She knew I was going to go to school to be a nurse, mm -hmm. and she was like, "No, you are meant to be an English yeah. teacher." And I was like, yeah. "Well, I'm going to school to be a nurse." Yeah, and that's a whole other story. See, I loved <laughs> science and social studies. I, mean, I loved social studies when it comes to historical stuff and different cultures and all that. I actually have a minor in cultural geography, and. I never thought I would, language arts is not my thing. I, Cause I like books and I didn't like when people told yeah. me what to yeah, read. Yeah. And then some of, oh you know, some of the things we were I'm made to read. Oh, the Canterbury Tales. And oh, um, the so Scarlet it, Letter. Yeah. It is funny because I am a language arts teacher now. <laughs> so <laughs> it kind of worked out that way, which I do love doing what I do, but it, it is kind of funny that yeah I was all best. I was all in the arts no including social studies yeah. like if I include social studies in that if it, I would like run from the science hallway yeah. so okay 
If you were given a book as a present that you had read before and hated, what would you do? Unhaul it. <laughs> I would keep it for a while and then if I had the nerve. I, I'm such a book hog. Now, unless it was the book thief, that thing <laughs> would go away immediately to <laughs> be discussed later. But um, I've done better, I think, with unhauling recently. But I, my probably because library, she has me as a is. friend, and it's it really is. like I'm like, oh, didn't like this. No. It's going to somebody yeah. else. It's going to somebody. right. But I mean, yeah, I keep my books. I literally keep long. a stack of books next to my bookshelf, and I'll just like take them off my bookshelf and put them next to the bookshelf, and that's a sign that they're unhaul books. So the sh books that are on the floor in there now, those are unhauls. <laughs> okay. Um, 16. What is a lesser known series that you know of that is similar to Harry Potter or The Hunger Games? Well, first of all, both of those are so different from each other. And I just, I'm like, I don't know if there are because ev there aren't many lesser known ones at this point. I feel like just because the YA genre has taken off so much and so is fantasy. So... I don't know. I mean, obviously, there's some similar. Like, House of Night by PC and Kirsten, Kristen Cass. They weren't, they're now yeah. more well known than yeah. they were when they were coming out. Yeah. Um, like, no, in fact, because actually, never mind, because they came out kind of mm -hmm. alongside Vampire Academy, and I thought that House of Night was a way better title than Vampire Academy. Yeah, it is. Which I still stand by. Yes. Um, but, um,. That's why I read House of Night versus Vampire yeah. Academy. But Vampire Academy definitely exploded more than House of Night yeah. did. But now, but the only reason I would say that those are similar to Harry Potter is because it's like both at a boarding school. Not because of... I mean, yeah, there's magic. Magic, but not to that but extreme. But not like, not like Expelliarmus magic. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Okay, um, 17. What is a bad habit you always do while filming? So, I don't film much. Unless I'm with Paige, and I know I, I think I worry too much. Oh, I thought you were about to say a bad habit for me, and I was like, "What's my bad habit?" When no, I, film? I don't know. Looking I, up at the at the viewfinder instead of the lens. I'm trying to be better about. Oh, that. I don't even think about that. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I always do. <laughs> I just worry about things. I don't know. I and I know I say um no and like too much. Like. <laughs> This happened recently when we were filming. We were at Barnes and Noble and we were trying oh, to find awkward. like a like we were yeah. every clip we filmed in Barnes and Noble we tried to find kind of like an area we weren't bothering anybody. Yeah. And so finally I was just like, I'm filming right here in this YA aisle. <laughs> And this girl just literally stood there yeah. and stared at us like the entire yes. time we were filming. And I was like, dude, like look at your book and then walk <laughs> away. Yeah, I find it, uh, yeah, I'm still not used to the whole filming in public thing. I feel like that's something that's awkward every time you do yeah, it. Yeah, and I would think it is. Because, like, I get used to it, and then, like, I don't do it for a while, and then mm -hmm. I go back to mm -hmm. it, and I'm like, oh, I can't do this. Like, I wanted to film last night in Barnes & Noble, but I was like, I can't do this. Plus, Cody was there, and he doesn't like being on camera, no. so that's one of the reasons I didn't. Yeah. Okay. 18, what is your favorite word? Titular. <laughs> we were watching BuzzFeed Unsolved last night and he said titular. titular. I was like, that is a $5 word right there. <laughs> I don't know if I have a favorite word at all. Blasphemy is a good Blasphemy's one. Good. Flabbergasted yes. is a good one. Yes. I have a lot of favorite words apparently. Splendid or splendor. Just, you know, words that aren't used much. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Um, are you a geek or a nerd? What's the difference? I think geek is more fandom based and nerd isn't. I would think I'm more nerd because I don't know. I guess like, I'll be more a geek then. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways. Um, 20. <laughs> Vampires or fairies and why? Okay. <laughs> Werewolves. <laughs> We aren't there yet. Hold it. Oh, oh. It's only vampires oh. or fairies. So you My bad. Try vampires. That's what I was going to say. I would do vampires too. Because, because there's of... more of a chance you're going to run into mm -hmm. a good vampire. There's very, there's really not very many good fairies. I thought you were going to say because of Discovery of Witches. No. Fairies aren't in that. Are they? 
Aren't vampires? Vampires yeah. are. That's what I was gonna say. And demons are. Right. And witches. I know okay. fairies aren't, but I, I had thought I you had to I had to discover witches. Yeah. Dang. Okay. Vampires. Okay, twenty one. Shapeshifters or angels and why? Shapeshifters. See, I really don't have a preference with either one. I am, okay, so I like the idea of angels and I believe in angels and I believe in demons, but I am not religious. And a lot of books that deal with angels As go toward religion and Christianity yeah. and all of that. And see, I haven't read much dick. I haven't read enough that would include shapeshifters or angels. The only angels I can think of are the mortal instruments, which I have not finished and have not get, gotten anywhere close. Yeah. Two. Um, 22. Spirits or werewolves? Werewolves. Same. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's a book, and this is going to have spoilers for like the next two minutes, so I don't know. Don't listen for two minutes. Um, for How to Hang a Witch by Adriana Mather. Mm. And in that book, there's a ghost. And there's somewhat of a little bit of a romantic connection yes. there. And it's just so tragic. Like, right. you know there's no way that that can happen. Yes. Although, there was this news article recently about this woman who believes she married a ghost. Oh, well, we know you, like, yeah. That was Paige, weird. Right, but Paige also <laughs> believes in ghosts. I do. So, <laughs> we were talking about this last, last night. Because apparently <laughs> Becky and my husband Cody we, don't believe in yeah, anything. Yeah, there aren't ghosts. And she's like, yeah, there's demons. And, uh, and I'm like, no, there's not. <laughs> like, in books there are. But yeah, I I was just werewolves. And mm -hmm. I'm, you know, Jacob Black. And even though Twilight, I'm just, I still, the werewolves. And then even Bitten. Yeah. Those are good. What was his name again? I don't remember. I don't think it, it wasn't. It was wasn't looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's on, what, what is it on now? It's on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, And then Bitten, it's also a series. And it's like, it's three seasons on Netflix. The book series is like 10 books or something. Yeah. Something crazy, but it follows different people. So like after I got rid, I, I'm one of those people few. like, yeah, like after the mm -hmm. first few, I'm just like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Okay. 23. Zombies or vampires? Vampires. Same. Zombies are dead people. So I, I just can't. <laughs> I have never read or watched anything with zombies that I liked. I don't think I've and I've tried anything with zombies because I never did Walking Dead or any of that. Coral, Coral. Okay, oh, I couldn't after that. <laughs> she doesn't get it, but no, if, I don't. If she watched and Walking clearly, Dead for five minutes, she would. Clearly, I'm not missing anything. No. I mean, in my <laughs> opinion, no. But people are gonna be yelling at us in the comments because we're not. Probably because we're not Walking Dead fans. Not but whatever. whatever. No, I just can't. At uh, 24, love triangle or forbidden love? I think both can be done well. I'm not one of those mm -hmm. people that... Okay, if there for a while, why, with YA, love triangles got to be a major... Like, it seemed yeah. like every series needed a love triangle, and that was annoying. But, like, I'm not going to read the back of a book and get the impression that there's a love triangle mm -hmm. and not read it for that reason. Because they can be done well. Yeah. Same with Forbidden Love. They can be done well. I think until they take it too far. Like, there's some Forbidden Loves. They should just stay forbidden. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's sure. some. I mean, yeah. And but, if, it, if it's forbidden because the dude or the girl yeah, is, a, is an or, abusive ass. Or that. Or too. that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know. There, there's some those, reasons. Those, those are good reasons. But also, like, hate to love. Sometimes I, I want to read yeah. that and sometimes I don't. So it just kind of just depends on my mood. Yeah, I'm a very mood reader and so just like the whole love triangle i think in twilight which i think that was not needed or um to all the boys i've loved before kind of i, I mean there's just some i don't know but i think it's a more the love triangles may be more of the ya i don't think i've read any adult yeah where there are love triangles a love triangle that has done well is The Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare. Well, I haven't read those yet. And, just in case you guys didn't know, I am not a huge... Like, I read all of the Shadowhunter books, and I actually kind of like mm -hmm. them. But, I'm not a huge, huge fan of hers. Like, I don't love everything she writes just for yeah. the sake that she wrote it. I, I Like, The Infernal yeah. Devices, Love Triangle, that was done well. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to think of some other ones that were done well, but... I don't know. 
So Grisha trilogy. There was I'm not there yet, so there don't was, spoil there it. Was, there, don't was some good, spoil. No, there were some good romance no. moments in that. No, I'm <laughs> almost done with Shadow and Bone and the other two are on their I, way. And, and the thing is it wasn't really a love triangle, so I'm not I don't even know really why I'm saying it, but that those were good. No. I still like the darkling. I don't want that ruined. Okay. <laughs> and I know it's going to be 25 uh, full on romance books or action packed with a few love scenes mixed in. Okay, this is a hard question because I feel like some romance books will throw in a lot of like action or like something that's like just because. Just yeah, just because and it's not done well. Yeah. But if it's done well, I like it. And also, it once again it just depends on the mood I'm in. Right. I think I don't know, there was that one that you got me, the the Scottish one or whatever, and they included like there was, yeah, a murder there was a murder and stuff in it and it was supposed to be like a historical romance and it was so and it's weird. a 23 book series and apparently every one yes. of the books have something in it yes like and a, i was like it was so subplot. unneeded and such a weird way it was done like the book wasn't bad but like usually those types of books i can read in one or two days like i can honestly knock it out even with a full-time job and not everything else going on but that one, it took me probably a month to get through because it just, it was so focused on like the murder and the suicide and all that. And I was like, and you no. were just like, I just want a good bodice ripper here. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, I don't know. I mean, but then there's books, but, I think the action pack, like I'm a Game of Thrones, huge fan and read the books except for the last one and the one obviously that's not been published yet whenever that's coming. But I think the action with that and some of the romance, there's not much because that's where you get into forbidden love and all that. See, that's what I was about to say is that like for fantasy, I almost yeah. always want at least some kind of yes. subplot of romance somewhere in there. And I don't even really know why. I think it's honestly because if there is a romance in it, it is written... I hate to say like for with a female in mind, but I feel like fantasy as a whole has been dominated by Males. male authors yeah. for so long mm -hmm. that if there's not a romance, then it's almost like there's nothing I, I don't know. Right. I don't know. It's so, so hard to explain, but like, yeah, okay. my first question is always, is there a romance whenever anybody recommends a fantasy Right. To me? And that's actually last night because yeah. Cody picked out, her husband picked out books for both of us and we were kind of. <laughs> You know, we let him, and he went straight to fantasy. But we both were like, okay, so is there romance? And even he picked it out just thinking about that in mind. Like, yeah. you don't have to have a lot. But, yeah. I yeah. Mean, so, but that was the last question. So, well, I guess that means our last episode is done. Or our first episode. First episode. <laughs> not the last episode. Last Hopefully episode. Hopefully <laughs> not the last. Yeah, so we're at, now we're done with this podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so our first episode. episode is done. Yes. And, yeah. I don't know what else to say. Because I'm say, not good at signing off yet. But, I was going to say, you want to leave off with our current read? That would require me to know what my current read is. The book title? It was the one, wasn't it the one you had last night? My current read. Oh, it's way over there. The Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duffkin. Mine's Shadow and Bone. Which is billed as a dark romance. A dark villain mm -hmm. fantasy romance. Oh, that would be good. So, I haven't finished it yet, so I can't really recommend it. But, yeah, I'll let you know. Okay. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Yes, this is our hopefully hope first of many. First of many. First. We will be here on YouTube, iTunes, hopefully Spotify, all the fun places where you can find podcasts. We also have our Instagram at Saved by the Books Podcast. Yep. We'll be and posting. on Twitter, we are Saved by by books pod yep <laughs> we'll leave it all linked down below and we will see you next week with another episode or talk to you next week whichever yep. way you're listening slash watching this yep. <laughs> um yeah hit the thumbs up button all that good stuff and subscribe and bye bye